Hello everyone, Derek here. Welcome to part one of this series on building your color workflow in DaVinci Resolve. This is going to be geared toward anyone interested in coloring their own projects who may not have an idea of where to start. There are many ways you can go about doing this, but I'm going to show you the way I think is the easiest to get solid results right away, but also leave you with the ability to customize later on. In this video, we're setting up our color management, which will provide a nice foundation for the rest of the workflow. With color management, we're taking our images from the camera space that they were captured in, into a timeline working space, and then into our desired display space. The reason we're doing this is to have a unified working space for all of our footage so that the tools that we use work consistently and effectively. It also allows us to output to a variety of display spaces using the same workflow. So to get started, First thing we want to do is go down to our project settings, click on the gear icon here in the bottom right, go to color management on the left. We'll see this top part here. This is the main part that we're focused on. We want to keep color science at DaVinci YRGB. Timeline color space, we're going to switch to DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. That will be our timeline color space, our working space, so that Resolve knows what space we are in and the tools can work correctly. The output color space setting can affect the viewer inside Resolve as well as how the file is tagged in the delivery page. Because we will be using node-based color management, this will not affect the signal of the final image, only how it might be displayed. If that sounds complicated, it's because it is. Sorry. To add to things, the latest update to Resolve also changed how some of this works. But here's the basics of what you need to know with how they stand at the time of this video. Setting the output color space setting to Rec709 Scene will tag the file correctly at 111. If you are on a Mac and on the 20.2.2 version of Resolve, this will also match the viewer to QuickTime. However, this image will only be accurate if you're using the HDTV video BT709BT1886 display preset or an equivalent reference mode. If using a previous version of Resolve, you will need to select the Rec709A option. For my purposes, I have a custom profile that matches my reference monitor, which is calibrated to the Rec709 Gamma 2.4 standard. So I will be choosing that option, knowing that I will need to specify the tags in the delivery page as well. One more setting that we want to change while we're here, down here at lookup tables, we want to change this option right here, trilinear to tetrahedral, which will give us smoother results if we end up using a lot. I'm going to click save. Okay, now it's time to start organizing and grouping our clips. The way I like to do this is to create a group for each camera space that is being used in the edit. Here we have five clips. Two of these are black magic, two are red, and one is an already normalized Rec. 79 image. And we will color manage all of these. So begin by selecting all of the images that come from the same camera. Pick one camera first. I will select black magic images here and just right click on that and click add into new group and call this whatever you would like I will just call this black magic and you'll see once you do that you will get four dots up top here instead of two you'll have a group pre-clip which will be adjustments before your clip adjustments which is right here you also have your post clip adjustments that come after your clip. And then at the end, you still have your timeline adjustments that will affect the entire timeline. So we're going to do that for every other camera that we have. These two are red. So again, add into a new group. We'll just call this red. And one more. This is already normalized, so we're going to make this into another new group and call this Rec. 709. Okay, now that our cameras are grouped, we can start our color management process. Let's begin with the first clip. This is an 
in the Blackmagic group. If you forget which group it is, you can right click here, go to groups, and it will show which one it's already in. So to do our first part of our color management, we're going to go into our group pre-clip area. And this is where we will start our process with our IDT. We can label that here. That stands for Input Device Transform, which will take us from camera space into our working space. Go under Effects, Color Space Transform, and drag that in there. So we're going to take our camera space, which for this is like Magic Design Wide Gamut Gen 4 and 5, and our Gamma that it was captured in. Black Magic Design Film Gen 5. You will either know these settings because you were the one who shot the video, or you will need to ask whoever took the video for those settings. We're moving from camera space here. We're going to into our working space, which is DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate. For tone mapping method, we're going to select none because that's not needed when you go from one log space to another log space. That is our IDT setup. See on the clip, we will leave that alone and blank. This is where grading will take place. So then we move to our post clip. This is where we're going to do the ODT process. You can label that here. Same thing, we pull in a color space transform. We're going to take it from our grading space now out to our display space. So again, we'll select DaVinci Wide Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and we're doing our SDR delivery. So Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. Tone mapping, now we do want this selected because we're going from a log space to a display space. And I would leave this at DaVinci the default. Out of these options, this is going to give you the best result. You can leave gamut mapping at none. I often like to select saturation compression, which is going to keep saturation in bounds for your output space that you're going to. It also adds a knee so it isn't clipped hard at one. So now we have one camera space set up, and you'll see with our other one, that has already been normalized and ready for grading as well. So now we need to do that with the rest of our groups. We have two left. So this one is our red camera. We're going to go to the same place, pre-clip. And you can also go and just copy and paste the previous one here or you can start from scratch and just change what is needed to be changed with the input spaces. This is a red camera, so we're going to change down here. I know these settings, they're right, red wide gamut, RGB, and red log 3G10. Going into the same space, no tone mapping. We move to our post clip, and this we can copy and paste as well. This one should be the exact same because we are going from our working space to our output space and we can leave the rest the same. And this will change for this one as well because that is in the same group. So both of these are now ready to grade. We have one image left. This one is in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4 already. This will happen if you have an image that has a LUT burned in or you got stock footage, archive footage, anything like that. But we want to try to get it into the same working space so that our tools will work the same way. So to do that, we're going to go to our group pre-clip. Since this is slightly different, I will just start fresh. Still going to label this. And this, we basically want to reverse our ODT, since this has already undergone that process. 
So our input color space is going to be rec 709. And our input gamma is going to be 2.4. Still going into DaVinci wide gamut, DaVinci intermediate. This will actually lead the tone mapping on to DaVinci because we're doing the reverse of the ODT. So we need to reverse that process as well. And we'll leave gamut mapping to none for the IDT. Group post clip. Same thing, so we can actually copy that. And something you could also do here if you want to copy that to your IDT and just hit swap, it will reverse these. But it can always be a good idea to start from scratch as well to make sure the settings are correct and you don't miss anything. And that's it. We have our color management set up for all of our footage. We are ready to grade on our clip level. We will start with that workflow in the next video. See you there.